Good morning, guys. Um, my family is awake, and so if you hear noise in the background, just stay with me. Um, they are eating breakfast and slurping the last of a smoothie. You might hear my daughter running around. Um, that's just the the beautiful noise of this world that we get to enjoy daily, like children laughter someone breathing, birds chirping, that's all just beautiful noise. Thank God we get to hear it daily. Um, today we are reading Acts 20. It is Valentine's Day. Um, I hope you have a beautiful Valentine's Day. And so I know some people hate Valentine's Day, but God loves you and his love is better and bigger than anybody else's love. Um, so hold on to that. Um, yeah, hold on to that. I am reading the New Living Translation. Um, and then after that, I do have just a short, um, little bit that I'm going to give you out of my study Bible, which is the New International Version. Um, this is the study Bible I use. And this is the reading Bible I use. Um... And I use two different Bibles because it's just easy to read when there's not a lot on the page for me to not get lost. Um, but then when something hits me and I really want to know more about it, then I'll turn to this. But as you guys can see, the, the text is a lot. Uh, I'm trying to get it so you can see. The text is a lot smaller. Um, and there's a lot more on the page because it's the Bible. And then there's also like um in-depth um theories and thoughts and questions and maps and pictures and dates and timelines um so it gives you a whole lot of perspective and a whole lot of information um and so when I am just reading to spend time with God I find it better to read in my regular Bible that doesn't have all the extra stuff and only has God's words in it because otherwise I'm overwhelmed, I get lost. Um, and like how earlier today I was reading in my regular Bible, the one I read with you guys, and something hit me, something stuck out. And so then after finishing my reading, I was able to pick up the study Bible, go find that verse, and you know, see what the theologians thought and what timeline what you know see how it's crossed referenced throughout the bible um that way like i can be focused on god when it's um my time with god and not get overwhelmed and then um once i'm done with my reading then i will go and dive deeper um, that's what works for me. It might not work for you, but I know like before I wasn't even able to get through like the Bible at all before I would pick up the Bible and I always started with Genesis and I was like, bro, I can't, can't do this. But, um, having a, a Bible you understand makes a big difference because my great grandmother, when she was still alive, had gifted me, this was 20 years ago, she gifted me a New King James um, Bible. And even though New King James is easier to read than King James, um, because it wasn't the normal language I speak daily, it was still hard for me to understand. So every time that I had the urge to get closer to God and I would sit down to open my Bible, as soon as I would get a couple seconds in, I was overwhelmed. I would close the Bible and years would go by. And then um, someone, I was gifted this Bible, guys. I did not go and buy it myself. The Lord directed someone to hand me this bible and they knew to make it pretty and pink for me um and i opening this by the new living translation just um and reading it in the language that i normally use made such a big difference like i was 
just going through the Bible in a way that I had never gone through before. I was able to get through a chapter and then a, a verse and then a chapter and then a whole book and then the whole Bible. Like I've I've read this whole Bible and I I think um, now I could do it with the New King James Version or the King James Version. I have tried to go back and read like now I have different Bibles. So sometimes I'll read a verse here and then see how it looks in the King James Version. Um, but the Bible says to in all you're doing, get understanding. Um, and it is hard to get an understanding when there's a language barrier um it's like why you wouldn't go if you speak english buy a bible in spanish and read it in spanish because you're not gonna even though the words are there jesus's words are there you're not it's not gonna register in your soul <clears throat> and so that's my spiel i'm sorry i did not mean to go off on a spiel um or a tangent or whatever but i just really think it's important that wherever you are in your walk that you make sure that the bible you're reading that you understand it because you can read something and not know what it means and this is something that you want to know what it means when you're reading it you need to understand it you need to read it in this version and if that version doesn't make sense um the you the if you don't have the funds right now to go out and buy a bunch of bibles because that's not what i did i got gifted Bibles over time. This actually is the only Bible I bought for myself. I actually bought it for my husband and I use it. He doesn't use it. He uses um, just a regular NIV Bible. This is NLT and then this is NIV study. Um, but the U version Bible app, you they have probably hundreds of versions of Bibles. Um, that's something you can download on your phone and you can be reading something and sometimes I'll switch to the Passion Translation, the Amplified Version, the King James. You can literally switch and read that same verse in every single translation until you get an understanding. And don't move on until you get an understanding. Um, but we're gonna move on, we're gonna start reading. So Acts chapter 20, verse 1. When the uproar was over, Paul sent for the believers and encouraged them. Then he said goodbye and left for Macedonia. While there, he encouraged the believers in all the towns he passed through. Then he traveled down to Greece, where he stayed for three months. He was preparing to sail back to Syria when he discovered a plot by some Jews against his life. So he decided to return through Macedonia. Several men were traveling with him. They were Sopater, son of Phyrus, Py Pyrrhus, from Beria, Aristachus, and Secundus, from Thessalonica, Gaius, from Derby, Timothy, and Tychus, Tychicus and Trophimus from the province of Asia. I'm just gonna pause and say, regardless of what translation you get, the names are always hard. So I apologize if I'm not pronouncing them the right way. They went on ahead and waited for us at, Tr at Tros. After the Passover ended, we boarded a ship at Philippi in Macedonia and five days later joined them in Tros, where we stayed a week. On the first day of the week, we gathered with the local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching to them, and since he was leaving the next day, he kept talking until midnight. The upstairs room where he met, where we met, was lighted with many flickering lamps. As Paul spoke on and on, a young man named Eutychus, sitting on the window sill, became very drowsy. <clears throat> Finally, he fell sound asleep and dropped three stories to his death below. Paul went down, bent over him, and took him into his arms. Don't worry, he said. He's alive. They all went back upstairs, shared in the Lord's Supper, and ate together. Paul continued talking to them until dawn, 
and then he left. Meanwhile, the young man was taken home alive and well, and everyone was greatly relieved. Paul went by land to Asos, where he had arranged for us to join him. While we traveled by ship, he he joined us there, and we sailed together to Mytilene. The next day, we sailed past the island of Chios. The following day, we crossed to the island of Samos, and a day later, we arrived at Miletus. Paul had decided to sail on past Ephesus, for he didn't want to spend any more time in the province of Asia. He was hurrying to get to Jerusalem, if possible, in time for the festival of Pentecost. But when we landed at Miletus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him. When they arrived, he declared, You know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came for me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for the Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it is not by my fault, for I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. So guard yourselves and God's people. Freed and shepherd God's flock, his church purchased by his own blood, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day, and my many tears for you. And now I entrust you to God the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. I have never coveted anyone's silver or gold or fine clothes. You know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs and even the needs of those who were with me. And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt and prayed with them. They all cried as they embraced and kissed him goodbye. They were sad, most of all because he had said that he would never see him again. That they would never see him again. Then they escorted him down to the ship. And that is the end of Acts chapter 20. It's short. It's to the point. And the only thing that I want to just address really quickly is um, just a note here from my study Bible. Um, And this is something to think about. It says we often feel that life is a failure unless we're getting a lot out of it. Recognition, fun, money, success. But But Paul considered life worth nothing unless he used it to accomplish the work God had assigned to him. That is what he wanted to be known for. What is your identity built upon? Who are you in God's eyes? Humbly ask him, God, to show you how God sees you. Um, And I just thought that was something to ponder. Um, And I never thought about asking God 
to tell me how he sees me. Um, like I've asked him to show me his will for me, but not like, tell me how you see me right now. Like, am I a reflection of you? Am I doing what you want me to do? Am I obsessing over things I shouldn't obsess over? Um, so yeah, I just thought it was cool. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. Um, just sorry, my tea kettle is, you guys can probably hear it. So I got to go turn it off. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you're not a failure, whether regardless of how much fun you're having in your life over the weekends, regardless of how much money is in your bank account, regardless of whether you got the promotion or not, regardless of whether you put in all the work, you did all the work and someone else got the recognition, you put in all the work and your name never got called, God sees you. Um, and the only thing that you need to accomplish in this wor world is, um, is fulfilling the mission that God has for you, doing God's work. Um, nothing else matters. And that was Paul's stance is that nothing else matters. Jail, jail won't scare him. Um, suffering won't scare him. Hardship, being stoned, verbal abuse, nothing of, nothing like that would stop him. Mama. I'm coming. <laughs> All right, guys, you get the point. I hope you have a blessed day. Um, and I will talk to you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, guys.